Hello and welcome to this video on the DCS Gazelle. Uh, the Gazelle is certainly the most controversial DCS module uh, within the DCS community and uh, the flight sim community generally. Um, and most of that controversy centers around the flight modeling, which is what I will be discussing today. I was inspired to make this video by Casmo TV. He did a video review of the uh, DCS Gazelle, um, and he reviewed it somewhat favorably. I'll leave a link to uh, his video in the description. Um, he is a former Kiowa and Apache pilot, so he certainly has a uh, perspective on flying helicopters. Um, I am not a helicopter pilot, but I am an engineer who specializes in helicopter handling qualities. So uh, I will be taking that perspective when I uh, make this video, or as I make this video. So as an engineer, I want to take a more data-driven approach. Um, previous discussions of the DCS flight model have all been qualitative. You know, the people have made statements like it flies on rails, or you know, it doesn't, they don't think it behaves correctly, you know, and they're too squirrely, it's too sensitive, it's not sensitive enough, things like that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to largely ignore uh, statements to that effect. I want my statements to be more grounded in physics and actual data. Speaking of data, uh, my primary reference for this is a flight test report titled Flight Test of the Aerospecial SA-342 Helicopter. It was prepared by the Army Air Mobility Laboratory and it was released in August 1975, which is about 45 years ago. Yeah, the helicopter is that old. A good starting point for validating uh, helicopter models is to look at uh, hover performance. Unfortunately, I don't have a great way of extracting dimensional helicopter power from the simulation. So instead, I will be jumping directly to trim in forward flight. Good news is that the flight report includes control positions in trim forward flight. It is included in plots at the end of the report, and both high speed and low speed data is included. I digitized this data and plotted both the low speed and the high speed data on one chart from zero to 150 knots. The low speed data includes both hover and operations in ground effect as well as out of ground effect. The dotted line here represents hover in and operations in ground effect. The solid line represents data out of ground effect. You'll notice there's a discontinuity around the 40 knot point um, and that's where the low speed data ends and the high speed data begins. You'll notice that there's a fair bit of cross control right stick and left pedal was being held uh, at around 40 knots and low speed uh, out of ground effect. I suspect that the aircraft was being slipped significantly in order to maintain view of pace vehicle. I smoothed out these plots into what you see here to represent one continuous trend from zero to 150 knots. We're going to ignore the transition region between about 10 knots and 40 knots for now and just look at the high speed and hover trends. Lateral stick remains roughly constant at all speeds. It is held slightly left, however. Longitudinal stick moves forward with airspeed. This is very typical for helicopters that are speed stable or helicopters that exhibit speed stability, which most do. This is a result of the dissymmetry of lift on the advancing and retreating sides. The pedals transition from right to left. This is very typical for a helicopter like the Gazelle with a clockwise spinning rotor that advances on the left-hand side. Collective is held fairly high in hover. It decreases into the bucket speed at about 60 knots and then increases again as airspeed further increases. The bump in the low speed transition region is likely due to rotor wake interaction with the tail and it requires additional forward cyclic to overcome the downward force of the tail. So there's nothing really unusual here and uh, the report mentions pretty much all of this. They mentioned the lateral stick remains pretty stationary at about 41%. They mentioned it exhibits very good and actually extremely good speed stability. Longitudinal stick moves forward almost linearly with airspeed above 50 to 60 knots. And the collective follows the typical power required curve. The aircraft in the report was flown at 3,500 pounds gross weight, which is difficult to achieve in DCS. Um, I had to reduce fuel to about uh, to below 20% and remove all the gun ammo. I am flying the minigun version of the Gazelle. Um, now another thing to note uh, because of this is the aircraft that we are flying is not necessarily representative of the aircraft that was flown in the report. Uh, the aircraft in the report was most certainly flown with the doors on in a clean configuration. Uh, we do not have that option. Um, the Gazelle models in DCS 
have either this or weapon stations or something else. Uh, this is the best I could think to do. I don't know how and if the differences in drag are modeled, um, but uh, better, better to make as good an approximation as possible. Now, for the evaluation, I will be doing this with the SAS turned off. You do that down here. All the SAS does is provide rate damping on the pitch roll and yaw axes. Um, this shouldn't make a big difference for uh, forward flight trims, but we will disable it nonetheless. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick us up into a hover and then compare the trends or the uh, control positions that we see in hover and DCS to the control positions suggested by the report. Now the report suggests that the stick should be held about here um, for hover. Pedal should be held at about 75% and the collective should also be at about 75%. Unfortunately, we are not going to see this. So I'm going to go ahead and center the stick and do things as if I didn't know what should or will happen. So I'm going to leave the stick centered, I'm going to leave the pedal centered, and I'm going to slowly come up on the collective until the aircraft leaves the ground or becomes light on its skids. Okay, the aircraft didn't really become light on its skids, but it did jump right into the air. Um, I immediately had to put in some right pedal to counter the, uh, the rotor torque. I am holding right pedal. The collective, however, is at 25%. This is very, very low. Um, now we are at a low gross weight considering you know what this aircraft is capable of, but it should not be this low. Uh, the report suggests that we are 50% uh, you know, lower than we should be. Uh, the pedal is not held as far right as it should be, but eh, it's reasonable. I'm not going to uh, complain too much about that. Uh, what is concerning is the stick position. The stick is dead center. Um, it should not be there. It should be significantly further aft and uh, slightly held uh, left, although it is interesting that it would be held left considering that this is an aircraft that um, would exhibit left translating tendency. Um, speaking of translating tendency, I don't notice too much. Um, I don't feel like I have to hover right wing low all that much, although maybe I am. I just don't see it very much. Um, now, we are in ground effect here. Um, that will lower the collective slightly, um, but not that much. So I'm going to go ahead and climb out of ground effect. And we will evaluate uh, what happens then. So here we are out of ground effect, and you can see the collective is still fairly low. Uh, maybe not 25%, but it's, it's more like 30, 40%. And that is still significantly, we're still climbing a little bit, which can also have something to do with that. So this is still significantly lower than it should be. Stick is still centered, and I'm still holding right pedal. I'm gonna go ahead and transition us to forward flight. To do that, I have to push forward on the stick, but then the stick, I bring the stick back to center. The aircraft continues to accelerate if I hold this attitude. To hold this attitude, I do not have to move the aircraft or, or continue to move the stick forward. The stick remains centered, and I will continue to accelerate until the drag of the aircraft equalizes with the thrust of the rotor. So here we are. I'm going to go a little bit faster up until about 200, uh, 200 kilometers per hour. And I'd imagine that would translate to about, yeah, about 100 knots, around somewhere around there. So at 100 knots, my stick should actually be centered, but it should be further forward than it was in hover, and that is not the case. So my stick has not moved. My pedals have moved closer to center. Um, they should actually be held right at this point, excuse me, held left at this point. Uh, my collective has come up a little bit, but um, above where it was in hover. I should be going go a little faster here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around and bring us back over the airfield. So I'm going to try to get us going a little bit faster here. So 
see if we can get ourselves up to about 250 kilometers per hour. I have to be a little careful not to hit the torque limit. I'll get a flashing on the torque indicator if that happens. Like I said, the aircraft is probably draggier than the aircraft in the report, which is probably why we can't get up there. There's the torque limit. Okay, so we're at about 250, maybe 240. As you can see, the pedals are roughly centered. The ball is centered. Collective is much higher now, which is good to see. But the stick is still centered. I should be having to move the stick more and more forward as speed increases if the aircraft was to demonstrate speed stability, as it should. Now, I was going to fly at a variety of different speeds and plot the control positions uh, using the control indicator here. I was going to take screenshots and then try to digitize that data. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I felt that was going to be a useless exercise because it was just going to show constant stick positions and uh, basically uh, there wasn't much to show. Uh, you know, I, I felt like a video would better convey that. So I'm going to turn us around one more time, we'll fly down the runway, and I'm going to talk about uh, one more thing, and that's uh, collective response and forward flight. Okay, so here we are flying a little above 200 kilometers per hour. Now I'm going to increase collective, and what we should see is a pitch up response. What I get is a slight roll to the left, which is towards the advancing side of the rotor. That is not correct. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, but uh, reducing collective now. So reduce collective, and I get a significant roll towards the retreating side of the uh, of the rotor, which is also odd um, and is not correct. So I don't I don't know why that's happening. Um, so what I can say is that the rotor is not being modeled properly. Full stop. Um, I don't know how it's being modeled. I don't know what kind of code the developers, uh, the developers are Polychop. Um, uh, I don't know what they're using uh, to model it, but it is certainly not um, behaving like a rotor should. And it is not consistent with the flight test data. Uh, rotors should be modeled. Um, you know, it's. I, I suspect it is not uh, but yeah, I would imagine rotor should be modeled, which is you know a full blade element uh, model with independent degrees of freedom for each blade for pitch. Uh, excuse me, for flap and lag. Um, it may not even have an inflow model. I'm not so sure. Um, th again, this is all speculation. I don't know how they're modeling it, but again, it it do I suspect it's not being modeled um, in a in a traditional blade element manner as it has been since. Uh, that's the way engineers have been modeling helicopters for dynamic simulation since the 80s, and even earlier than that. So, why make this video? Um, well, there is a lot of discussion about the flight model in the Gazelle. Um, again, like I said, it's all qualitative, and I wanted to just bring some data to the table and show what the real-life data suggests, and what DCS does instead. And um, as you can see, the, uh, the differences are night and day. Um, this video is not intended to be... Uh, it's, it's not intended to bash Polychop, the developers of this module. Um, rotor modeling and helicopter modeling is very, very difficult. Um, and uh, I suspect that they don't have, or at least the people who made the Gazelle at the time, did not have the background necessary to fully uh, appreciate the, the difficulties and the nuances of modeling the rover. Now, that's just speculation on my part again, but um, it, 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 it kind of shows. So the elephant in the room is, of course, the Kiowa Warrior. Uh, Polychop is developing the Kiowa Warrior. Um, that is a uh, helicopter that is near and dear to many people's hearts, and uh, it would be a shame to see it get the same treatment as the Gazelle. 
Fortunately, um, that appears not to be the case. Um, the uh, Polychop has indicated that uh, they are making a new flight model for the Gazelle, uh, excuse me, for the Kiowa Warrior, and that it will be ported to the Gazelle uh, when they are done, uh, which will be fortunate um, because, I mean, the Gazelle is, you know, this is a fun little helicopter, or at least it should be. But uh, for me, the experience is largely tainted by the fact that the modeling is so wrong and the, the trends are so wrong. You know, it doesn't, you know, and, and here I go making some qualitative statements, though, but because these trends are so wrong, it doesn't feel like I'm flying a helicopter. It feels like I'm flying something else. But again, that's a qualitative statement. Um, you know, the data, but, you know, the data suggests that you know, it, it's not behaving like it should. So, uh, my hope is um, that at least this brings to light and explains some of the issues that people are experiencing with the Gazelle and, and why there is so much frustration with the flight model uh, in the Gazelle you know, and, and why I feel frustrated by it. But again, my intention is to be constructive and not to bash Polychop. Um, I hope that Polychop has uh, you know, learned from their mistakes, as we all do, and uh, has, has, has since learned how to um, uh, improve and, and properly model a helicopter like this. It's not an easy task, and I can understand uh, the learning curve is rather steep. Uh, when they are developing their new aircraft, uh, the Kiowa Warrior and the new flight model for the Gazelle, um, I hope that they will be using uh, flight test data as their primary method of validation. Um, pilot opinion is good to an extent, um, but Flight test data needs to be the starting point. Uh, once the flight test data, or once the model is correlated against flight test data, then uh, pilot input becomes much more valuable because that can then be used to fine tune the air, uh, the, um, the model response, uh, but remain consistent to uh, actual performance and uh, and flight test data. Anyway, that's about it from me. Um, again, this uh, video is intended to be. Uh, constructive. Um, it's not intended to bash Polychop in any way. Um, and if you uh, point people to this video, please do so in good faith and not with the intention to um, you know, bash the developers. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We all want a nice helicopter that is well modeled and fun to fly and behaves realistically. So, on that note, um, I, uh, I will close out this video. Thanks for watching and uh, happy flying.